is it? It's me, Cora. Afternoon. Oh, honey, tell me you're here. You brought me a ball gun and you're going to take me to the Centennial Ball. I'm sorry, Tina. I wish I could say that. But the minute Yolanda got an idea about what I was talking about, she said, no way. Of course, what was I thinking? I mean, that would be too much fun, and I'm supposed to be miserable. Something like that, yeah. But before you start pouting, I think you better take a look at what I got here in this bag. A bunch of real nice Christmas decorations that your little boy made for you. CJ really made all these? Yes, ma'am, in preschool. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's a lot of neat stuff in here, including some things that little Al made for Gabrielle. So, I think we should take these, decorate your room, and before you know it, you'll forget all about that dumb dance. Yes, enter. Megan, is that you? Yes, it is. I could smell your perfume. And, uh, I think I see something glittering. My new diamond earrings that a very generous man gave me yesterday. <laughs> I'm sure they look beautiful on you. Oh, you know, I tried to call you yesterday and then again last night, but, um, you were busy with tests and then you weren't taking your phone calls. So when I got your message, I came right over. Well, I'm awfully glad you did, Megan. Now, wait a minute. What's going on here? You're all... <laughs> Dress. Where are you going? Sit down for a minute. We'll talk. You seem very down. What is it? Well, I was feeling very down until you walked into the room. Well, I was feeling very down yesterday until I got a whole bunch of surprises. <laughs> Allow me to give you a token of my gratitude. <laughs> Wow, it's a beautiful dress. It's rather spectacular, isn't it? A few more beads and then I'll have it done just in the nick of time. And Max and Megan will never know how you slaved over this creation. No, and I don't want them to. But isn't Tonya going to say that she didn't make it? Look, when Tonya starts getting compliments from Max and everyone else, she'll assume it's one of her gowns. When she realizes it isn't, she'll be too embarrassed to admit that she didn't make it. Well, I still think that you're wrong not to take the credit for it. Well, maybe I will one day, but right now I need to get on and finish it so I can do other things. Well, I'm not supposed to be here. What are you doing? Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't win. Don't cry. sicker than you did yesterday. Well, uh, I uh, don't feel as bad as I look. Deborah, would you take her home, get her into bed? Oh, no, she's feeling much better, and she oh. was just being cooped up at the halfway house. It's so dreary there. Cabin fever. Oh, cabin fever. I, I understand. You shouldn't be working. Get out of here. Max, I do have some work to finish, really. Really? Um, would uh, this be it? Uh. Uh, that's a dress that Tonya is making for Megan. I don't believe it. Why not? I don't believe how marvelous this gown is. Oh, this is exactly the look I wanted to create for Megan. Tonya's an absolute genius. <laughs> Do you really think that Megan will... Oh. that she'll forgive you everything? I don't know about that, but it's certainly a start. Either way, Tony should not have you working in here if you're ill. I'll have her finish it off. No, I, you know, I felt so guilty that I couldn't help her in the first place. Well, I'm, I'm amazed that she went to all this trouble. She said she didn't have any time. I know, and all the rest of her work has been backed up, so I've offered to do the finishing touches. But look, if you bump into her, don't let on that you know about the gown. How come? Because you're not supposed to know what it looks like until you see it on Megan tonight. When she leaves me breathless? Yes. Uh, 
Listen, tell you what, you promised me that when you finished, you go straight home. I'll go straight home. I'll stay there all night and read about the ball in the paper tomorrow morning. Oh, Gabrielle. Oh, it's all right. I think the two of you are going to look simply marvelous all dressed up. I hope someone's going to take pictures. Yeah, Cord's the photographer, so we'll be able to get copies. Great. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Deborah? To see you this evening? Yeah. Uh, oh, before I forget, uh, when you finish, would you buzz the production office? I'll send someone down. They can take it over to the Lambda Grand where Megan's staying. Thanks. Mission accomplished. He adores the dress. And thanks to your skill, he's going to adore Megan in it. I think you're going to get your wish, Gabrielle. Max and Megan's reconciliation. <laughs> I have no idea what the token of gratitude is for, but... <laughs> But keep them coming. Modesty becomes you. I really do owe you a lot. My life has been very difficult lately, and... Well, here I am. Laughing and kissing and being courted by a prince. I wish we could keep on sharing laughs. But unfortunately, there's something serious I need to talk to you about. I just wanted you to know how glad I am that you came to town. I certainly would not be excited about being the queen of the ball if you weren't escorting <laughs> me. Considering the fact you'd be escorted by a fairly blind prince. Well, in spite of your limited sight, you're more of a man than most men I've met. <gasps> Good heavens, am I blushing now? Oh, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Wait a minute, I have a present for you. Oh, I love presents, especially from beautiful women. Okay, now this one is a fun present. Ah, uh, it looks like a watch. Yes, an American classic, Mickey Mouse. Have you ever seen one? <laughs> oh, yes. I love them. Here, put it on me. Representative of the American sense of humor and all that, huh? Yeah, but I'm afraid I'll have to have somebody else read it for me. Well, you see, I have such confidence that you're going to get your eyesight back that I even inscribed it on the back. <laughs> Wonderful. What does it say? Mm -mm. You'll have to regain your sight in order to read it. Give you something to look forward to. Looking forward to seeing your face clearly again is more than enough incentive. But I'm touched. Especially since, even though you didn't know it, this is a farewell gift. Farewell? Are you leaving from a door so soon? This is our last meeting. That's what I had to tell you. I'm afraid it's goodbye forever. Boy, CJ and Al really made some really cool-looking decorations here. Yeah, they sure do. I tell you, it's amazing what they have kids their age do, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty wonderful of you to bring these by to give us a little holiday cheer. Oh, no. What? Tina, what's wrong? You didn't do all this because you found out that I wasn't going to be able to come home for Christmas, did you? No, Tina, that's not the case. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, that would just destroy me. I mean, I think I've done pretty good dealing with all this, you know, and I haven't complained too much. No, you're right. Tina, you've been a trooper through all this. Yeah, but having to spend my Christmas here, I don't know, it would kill me. Well, maybe Santa will bring you a little reward, huh? What else we got here in the bag? Well, I got this wreath I'm gonna hang, and I uh, just put the hook up. Okay. Hey, listen, have you talked to Vicky lately? Uh, yeah, I, I tried to call last night. But Heron said that she wasn't feeling well, so she wasn't taking any calls. Uh, that's probably got something to do with Clint. He's back in town, and I don't think things are going very well between them. Oh, poor Vicky. Did she tell you what happened, you know, when she and Roger were pretending to be the Wedgworths? No. No, I haven't heard anything, but maybe, hopefully, tonight I'll hear more. <sighs> yeah, well, we got to get this guy taken care of. Within 11 days, Ambrose ha has got to do something to get it taken care of. Uh, you mean by Christmas, right? Well, yeah, so Judge Carlin can see what a wonderful job I've done and maybe let me go home for Christmas and never have to come back here. Well, I tell you, Tina, at least you're consistent in that. I mean, no matter how down you get, you always like to dream big, don't you? I guess that's what always gets me in trouble with you, too, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, now that you mention it, uh, I think maybe you're right about that. But you know what? It's not going to happen anymore. 
Mm. It just isn't. I am never going to dream big about anything unless it is right for you, me, and CJ. Court, I promise you that. What's the matter? Yes, Jane. Oh, send her in. Just let me uh, save this before I forget. All right, hello there. Hi there, partner. Hardly recognize you with that suit on, without oh. your chaps and cowboy hat. Well, I never was much of a suit man at heart. I'm really very impressed. Here we are, one day back into the 20th century, and you're sitting there behind your desk in front of a computer as if you've never left. How is it being back for you? Mm, not adjusting as quickly as you are, but I will soon. So, I assume that you've seen Vicky and everything's sorted out. Oh, really? Why do you assume that? Well, because you're sitting here behind the desk and... because she wanted you to come back so much and now you're here, she'd be a fool not to be happy about it. <laughs> See that couch over there? That's where I spent the night. That suitcase, that's my new closet. You know, I woke up this morning, I thought I was having a bad dream. You... you didn't find her with Roger, did you? Oh, not only did I find her with him, they were playing house. Uh, I don't, I don't mean in the bedroom. They were pretending to be another couple interested in adopting a child. I'm totally lost. Well, so was I when I walked in on it. It seems that they're working undercover trying to expose a baby selling ring. Now, Vicky claims that she left a message on my machine in Arizona asking me to come home and help out on this, but I damn sure didn't get any message from her. Anyway, that's how I found my beloved wife. That's another woman with another man. And it became pretty damn clear to me, pretty damn quick, that my marriage isn't worth the paper is printed on. But if she was just pretending to be another woman with Roger, then I... then I still don't understand. Well, the only thing to understand is that they assumed roles that came very natural to them. A devoted couple. You see, my wife is, is, is very devoted. Unfortunately, she's uh, devoted to another man. Why is this goodbye forever? My father, the king, died in his sleep last night, Megan. Oh, Raymond, I'm sorry. When I was awakened early this morning by my brother calling with the news, I... I was devastated. If only I had gotten home to see him one last time. Well, at least he didn't die worrying about me. He didn't know about your blindness? No, I, I'm sure he left this earth confident I could carry on where he left off, taking good care of the country. Oh, my God, that's right. You're king of Mendora now. Well, I think you're going to make a wonderful king. It's something I prepared for all my life. It's a role I, I thought I could assume with some ease, but now, with, with my vision so impaired, I, I've lost some of my confidence, Megan. Don't worry. You're going to regain your sight very soon, especially with the help of some professionals. There are ways of coping with this that you don't even know yet. I just wish that my sister Sarah could go with you for a couple of weeks. I'm sure they're quite competent therapists in Mendora. And, and now that my life is suddenly loaded with responsibility, I guess... I guess I can't just sit back and hope the blindness goes away, can I? I have to deal with this condition. Exactly. It's the mature thing to do. <laughs> Maturity. Maturity will be my new buzzword. No longer the playboy prince but the mature monarch. I can't even imagine having the weight of a whole country thrown on my shoulders so suddenly. I'm, I'm probably making too much of it. I'm probably focusing too much on that so I don't think about how much I already miss my father. Well, I'm, I'm sure that when you get home, there'll be a few days of funeral services, right? Yeah. Would it be easier for you if I was there with you. I could probably take some time off from Fraternity Row. I could hop a plane tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Megan. I wish I could 
put you in my suitcase and carry you home and unpack you and keep you with me always. But what I said about saying goodbye forever is the reality. Why? Because I'm no longer me. Because my life now belongs to thousands of Mandorans. They come first. Their will and their whims come before mine. I have so little time to myself, it'll practically be non-existent. Well, I don't understand why I can't spend a few days with you to help you through this. If you were there for the funeral and the coronation, I'm afraid the tabloids would turn the American actress into my girlfriend. And I'd be embroiled in controversy even while they're trying to decide if I can be effective without my sight. Yes. The helicopter is ready to take you to the airport, Your Majesty. It's time to go home. I don't know, Tina. Sometimes it just bugs me that you think the only reason we're having marital problems at all is because you were stuck here in this halfway house. And the real problem that we're having is what put you here to begin with. Oh, that's right. I don't know what came over me. I mean, for a minute, I actually forgot what a horrible person I am. And that because of that, that you can't trust me, you can't love me, and heaven knows, you certainly can't kiss me. Please, Tina, I didn't mean it that way, and you know it. Oh, well, just exactly what did you mean? I mean, you can kiss me. How am I supposed to know when it's okay and when it isn't? I'm sorry, you're right. I have been giving you mixed signals lately. I guess that's just characteristic of my confusion. I don't know, I, I'm in the car on the way over here. I got a bag full of things that your son, our son, has made for you to decorate this place. And then I start to think about the ridiculous reason that you're here, Tina. I mean, if you'd been honest with me, if you had talked to me, communicated with me... Yeah, I know, no, I know. All the terrible things I did, all right? I live with them every day. Okay, and I'm doing my best to make up for them. Again, Tina, I'm sorry. All right? In the spirit of the holidays, I'll try not to talk about them, all right? Sorry. Thanks. Now, just who are you going with to this ball? Uh, I'm going with my camera, because I'm going to be functioning as the banner photographer at this event. Sorry to disappoint you. So you're going to take a lot of pictures so you can show me everything I missed? Yes, I will. Tina, I'm sorry you can't go to this thing, because I know how much these things mean to you. Yeah, they do, but they don't mean as much to me as, as you and CJ. No kidding. Well, gee, that's nice to hear. Look, uh, I need to be going. Well, listen, you, uh, you give CJ a lot of hugs for me, okay? okay? And you tell Vicky to call me as soon as she can, as soon as she knows anything about Ambrose. I will. Listen, Tina, try to do something tonight, all right? Maybe watch TV, read a book, write a letter to somebody, just so you're not sitting around feeling sorry for yourself because you're not at this ball. Because after all, it is just a dance. You have fun. It's not too much. All right, I will and I won't, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry for myself is not the answer. But neither is staying home all night. Thank you very much. Do be careful with it.
you sleepy head. Max, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be at the ball. I was at the ball. And I danced all night with Megan in that beautiful gown. You want to know something? I wasn't happy. I kept thinking about you here all alone without me. And I kept trying to convince myself that I belong with Megan. That I really and truly do love Megan. The truth is, I don't love Megan. I love you. I'm taking you home with me to live with Al and me forever. Max, I've waited so many years to hear those words. Wardrobe. Max. Uh, yes, yes, no, the dress is on its way to Megan. Um, yeah, I'm going back to the halfway house to go to sleep, yes. I will. Bye. What about the paperwork to get out of here? It's all completed, Your Highness. Well, thank you, Philip. I just want one more minute alone with Miss Gordon, and, and then we'll be going. Well, gorgeous and talented actress. I'm afraid our little drama is over. I refuse to say goodbye to you forever. I don't care if you become the king of the whole world. <laughs> One day, when you least expect it, I'm going to show up in Mendora. And I expect to be welcomed. Mm. When the dust settles, and I get used to my kingly robes, I'll send you a royal invitation. But if it takes me a while to sort things out back at home, and you don't hear from me, don't take it personally. You made a prince very happy for a while, and that prince will never forget it. Well, we'll... Keep in touch somehow, I know. Somewhere around here, there's a small tape recorder. Do you see it? Yes, it's over there on the table. I want to give it to you as a goodbye gift. Full of surprises, mm. aren't you? It's the perfect way for us to stay in touch. Now, you can send me tapes I can hear, and I can send tapes back to you. I love that idea. Mm. That's great. Now, I want a tape tomorrow telling me about the ball. I want to know all about your triumph. I'm just sorry I won't be there with you. <laughs> Well, sounds as if it's time to go. Well, I'll walk you to the door. No, 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 just, just stop. Just kiss me. They insist you leave in this wheelchair, Your Majesty. I won't even argue. Uh, we're off to Mandora, Philip. And whatever adventure awaits, eh? Here. I'll miss you. I'll miss you. Tape often. All right, Philip. Landview Grand Hotel, Suite 602. Uh, that is the key. Megan's gown should have arrived. I want you to go there, and I want you to pin this note on the gown. Then put it in the closet, shut the doors. 
No problem. Did you hear anything from Megan about uh, the slippers and the teddy and the earring? Nothing. Not a word since she spit fire at me yesterday. And I... But wait, wait till you see this gown. When she sees it, she's gonna love it. She's gonna phone me. Uh, she's... All right, anyway, you get over there, you take care of it, and anyway, you need to get ready too, don't you? Yeah, um, your tuxedo's here, right? Yeah. So I'll come back and we'll go together, okay? Good. Andy? Yes? Promise me that by midnight tonight, the Centennial Ball Queen will be in my arms. It isn't that I don't believe what they told me, because I do. But I can't ignore what I saw. I mean, the way they played a, a married couple, you know, the ease, the, uh, the familiarity, the whole damn thing. Even the fellow that they were dealing with about the baby, he remarked about how rare it is to find such an obviously devoted couple. Oh, dear. And once again, Vicky couldn't deny her feelings for Roger. She refused to say that she wouldn't see him anymore. I mean, even after you told her that you were willing to give up Buchanan City to save your marriage? Yes. But since she has always considered Buchanan City a ridiculous venture on my part anyway, that was no big deal to her. So, you met and you parted again on a bad note. No, we parted on an ending note. It's over. It's flat over. I just got to uh, adjust to it, that's all. Clint, for someone who loves his wife as much as you do, that's, that's a terribly rash statement. <laughs> well, there's no way we can keep going through this. It's over. I'm through. I hate it because of the kids, but thousands of other kids have survived a divorce. I reckon ours will, too. Where will you live? With your father? Well, I thought about that, but... Hell, he'd keep nagging me about giving the marriage another chance, you know? So, I don't know, maybe I'll check into a hotel. I haven't gotten that far in my thinking yet. Hotel? Well, I suppose you'd be popping back to get a tuxedo. Tuxedo? Yes, for the Centennial Ball. It's tonight. Aren't you going? <laughs> it was Roger roping my wife into being co-chairperson of the Centennial Celebration in the first place that started this. Oh. Or maybe I should say ended it. I'm sorry. I forgot about that. I, I just thought that perhaps a little champagne and caviar might cheer you up. But I don't suppose you, you want to see your wife and Roger chairing this event together. Well, wait a minute. Maybe I should think about that a little. I don't want to go into hiding because of this thing. Maybe I will attend. That is so sad for him. How's he taking it? Well, I think he wanted to grieve, but he had to start thinking about becoming king. You know, it's funny. He told me he's been thinking about this moment all his life. Oh, yeah, it couldn't have come at a worse time. No, it certainly couldn't have. You know, even though we didn't spend that much time together before he left, I really feel that if he had lived here in Landview, we could have gotten to know each other really, really well and very close. Well, I don't know if it's much of a consolation, but at least you had to had a little time to spend together, help take your mind off Max. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you have the prince to thank for all those beautiful presents. What did he say about well, that? Well, you know, we never even had a chance to talk about it. You know, with his father and everything, and then he had to rush off to go home. Right. You know, now that he's not going to be my escort, I don't particularly want to go to this dumb ball. Megan, you have to go. No, I don't have to go. Listen, the prince had to go back to Mendora because he is king. You have to go to the Centennial Ball because you are the queen. Oh, that is hardly the same thing, Sarah. Well, it is the same thing in terms of responsibility. I mean, you can't just duck out. It would really disappoint Dad and Vicky. All right, make me feel guilty. Call me a terrible daughter. Hey. Don't pick a fight with me because you're upset your prince had to go back to Mendora and can't keep your mind off Max anymore. Uh, well, that's probably Tonya with the gown that I'm not going to wear. Megan, fine. Open the dumb door. Get the dumb gown and I'll put it on. Hi. Hi. Uh, Megan Gordon? Oh, she's right inside. I'll take them. Thanks. Just one second. Are those from Raymond, too? I don't know. Here you go. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Here's the card. Same handwriting. Mm -hmm. Dear Megan, these flowers are to make you smile on your coronation day as queen of the Landview Centennial <laughs> Celebration. But for your final and most beautiful gift, to open the closet door. Closet Coming door. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Megan, I'm so jealous. 
This is so beautiful. I definitely have to go to the ball so I can wear this you tonight. Are look, wait, wait, there's a note here. Oh, but what, who cares if I go? He's not even going to be able to even see me in this. Um, I hate to bring this up, but even if he were here, he couldn't see you. Maybe that's not the end of your gifts. I don't think my heart can stand it any longer, but open it up just in case. I'm afraid it's not who we thought it was. It's Max. I just need to sleep. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but I get really tired of seeing the same old people here in this house and the same old ugly clothes and never going out. So I am really in the mood to get all dressed up and go out dancing. Aren't you? No. Oh, come on. Yes, you are. Uh... Now, don't you want to see that dress you made for Megan? I mean, I know how hard you worked on it, and I know you want to see Max's reaction. And, you know, I certainly don't want Cord running around all handsome in his tux and me not being there. So, I'm going to go to the ball, and I thought you might want to tag along. Okay, Tina, what are you up to? Nothing. I'm up to nothing. I'm just going to the Centennial Ball, and I thought you might want to come with. What a nice warm welcome, Sarah. Sorry, Max. Sorry, we were expecting a special surprise. Oh? Why? Have you gotten any uh, other surprises? What can I do for you? I'm in a real rush right now. I have to get ready for the Centennial Ball. Well, for one thing, I was uh, wondering who might be sitting beside you tonight. Well, Prince Raymond was going to escort me to the ball, but he was called to Mendora. Suddenly, his father died. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then... So, I think I'd like to sit between my father and Vicky, if that's okay. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh... No, no. Uh, is there uh, anything I can do for you? I mean, you have uh, everything you need? Yes, I do. Uh, what about the gown? Did that arrive? Yes, everything? yes. This, these are lovely, lovely flowers. Yes, aren't they? I have a deadline, Max. All right, well, if there's... Uh, you got everything you need, and I guess you don't want to ask me anything. No, I have nothing to say to you but goodbye. Or is that redundant? Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, my flowers. Did he expect me to ask him to be my escort or something? He was obviously looking for something. You know, for a minute there, I almost thought he was the one who had been bringing you all these presents. Why would you think something like that? Well, I don't know. It was the way he was sort of hovering around, asking all the questions about the flowers and the gown. I mean, it was almost like he was waiting for something. Oh, sure. He was waiting for me to change my mind and to ask him to be my date to the ball. Are you sure he wasn't sending you those presents? Sarah, where would he find the time? Plus, he spends all his time worrying about Gabrielle. No, believe me, it's not possible. Okay, I guess you're probably right. Anyway, I hardly want to even get ready for the ball tonight. I might as well just wear my jeans. Why do you say that? Because everybody's going to be staring at you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it's true. I've never known you to walk into a room and not shine. You're going to look beautiful. Thanks for coming by. I'll see you later. Bye. See ya. Bye. Tina, in order for us to go to the ball, we would have to sneak in two gowns, and then we would have to sneak out in these gowns, and then we would have to find two tickets to the ball, and then we would have to hide the entire time we were there. Yes, and if I'd taken care of those things, what would you say? All right. Okay. I'm curious. I'm up. What's going on? Well, I snuck out of here 
And I snuck over to Land Fair. And I snuck out two evening gowns. One for you <gasps> and one for me. Oh, heavens. No, you didn't. You well, don't. Yes, I did. You did. Oh, my goodness. But what about Yolanda? Well, Yolanda, see, I told her that uh, you and I had to go out because we had to go to a parents' preschool meeting. Oh, no, no. You didn't do that, did you? Yes, I did. I mean, I knew she'd go along with it because she's a sucker as far as kids are concerned. And that way, we can stay out past curfew and not get in any trouble. Uh huh. What happens if we're spotted at the ball? Well, we're just going to have to be really careful, that's all. We will hide and we'll just watch everybody. Oh, come on, don't you want to see everyone? Don't you want to see that dress on Meg? Yes, 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 I agree with you, I agree with you. What about Reynolds? Uh, let me call you back on this, will you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Kevin! Kevin, how are you, son? Okay. I was, um, on my way home from basketball practice, and I decided to take another bus so I could see you. Well, I'm glad you did, I'm glad you did. Uh, Joey and I were talking last night. And we know that you didn't sleep at home last night. So, does that mean you and Mom are still fighting? Well, it, it isn't fighting so much as it is just not getting along, Kevin. I mean, we keep trying, but... Well, it seems like your Mom and I need a, need a long separation. Which means you'll never be back? No, no, no. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that at all, not necessarily. I mean, maybe... Maybe in the future we can work things out. Right now, it, it seems kind of impossible. Look, that, that doesn't mean that you kids are in any way at fault here. It doesn't mean that we love you any less. You hear me? Mm -hmm. All it means is... is your mom and I need a, need a big breather. I don't get it, Dad. Well, I... I don't get it, Kevin. I guess it's kind of like... Well, you know, even though you love your brother and sister, how sometimes you, you kind of want to be away from them? Mm-hmm. Well, I guess your mother and I have reached the point where... where we need to be away from each other. I'm sorry about that. I, I wish I could explain it, but I can't. And... So can't you try harder? Kevin, we have tried. We've tried very hard. We've tried really hard. Yeah, but you know, Joey and I can't do something. They always tell us to go back, try one more time. And, you know, a lot of times that works, Dad. A lot of times. You and Mom can try just one more time. You can do that, can't you? La la dip. time you hear this, we'll be apart. I already miss you, and I haven't even left yet. I keep thinking of the joy I'd find in your arms at the ball tonight. I wish I could be there with you. Dancing is one thing I can do without my sight. Oh, well. No use complaining about something I can't change. I just want to thank you one more time for coming into my life. I wish the timing had been different, been better. <laughs> On the other hand, I've never been known for my good timing. Please, send me a message soon. Love, Raymond. There. Does that cover the dark circles a little bit better? Great, you look like you had eight hours sleep. Oh, I wish I felt like I did. <sighs> Look, how are we going to get out of here in these gowns, especially 
without being noticed, uh, going to a parents' meeting? Well, we're going to put on big coats, and we're just going to stuff up everything under the coat. That way, Yolanda will never notice. Oh, great. Well, let's hurry up and do this before I lose my nerve. Girls left yet? Uh, no. We're, uh, we're just getting dressed. Yeah, well, listen. If you want to take your kids out for ice cream or something, it's okay. But you got to be back by 10, huh? Oh, Yolanda, that's so kind of you. Thank you very much. Well, you were working so hard to stick to the rules around here, you deserve a reward. So I'll see you, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, and bye. Oh, Tina, no, I don't think I can do this. I really don't. Oh, yes, you can. Come on, you already agreed to this. Well, Tommy, how are we gonna... Come on. How are we gonna get tickets? Don't worry, I already took care of that, all right? So don't worry about it. Just come on. Clear. 